All right, so that, that's pretty, pretty basic. That's the clone stamp. It takes pixels from one place, it puts them to another. And for the longest time, that's all we really had access to was that clone stamp there. But eventually, Adobe gave us the healing brush, which is good, better, maybe not better. It depends what the situation is. Let's move into some of these healing tools here. Uh, let's undo this, so file revert. Let's undo all that stuff. And if you hit J on the keyboard, it'll take you to where the healing tools hang out. I don't know why it's J, it just is. But let's take a look at this second one down. You notice it takes you to where the tools are, and if you click and hold, you'll get a little fly out. And the second one down, the healing brush, let's talk about this one for a second. Again, you could work on a duplicate or a transparent layer. I prefer a transparent layer, and you'll notice the same setting here, current and below. And with the regular clone stamp, it is very literal. You say take pixels from here and put them here, it will take those pixels and put them there. If they're too bright or too dark, it doesn't care. It will move them anyway. The healing brush has a little intelligence behind it. Uh, emphasis on, on little, very little. But it will be good at matching brightness. So if I sampled some pixels from over here, boink, and I said, let's put these pixels over here. Well, I can already see that it's gonna be too bright, right? But look at what happens when I click. Ooh, it darkened down. It's looking at the brightness of the pixels around the destination, and it's matching the brightness. So it's basically taking the texture from that area and dropping it over, but at an appropriate brightness. And same thing if I came from somewhere that was too dark. Grab this, hover over, that's gonna to be too dark, except it isn't. It looks at the pixels and it matches the brightness. And you're like, woohoo, that's awesome. It is for slight gradients. It can have trouble with things like more complex gradients. Like if you get around like a nostril or under an eye or an ear, there's some pretty complex gradients in there. And if you're working on something maybe under her eye or something. Let's say I said, oh, I wanna get rid of this line under her eye. And normally you wouldn't try to completely get rid of a line under an eye, but it's gonna do a guess as to what the gradient is. And sometimes it can do a good job, sometimes it misses a little bit. But give it a try. Call it that healing brush. And give it a chance to show its stuff. Very similar to the clone stamp. You need to hold the option key to define a source and then give a destination for that texture. Okay, so that is the healing brush. Let's take a look at the spot healing brush. So let's revert out of that. File, revert. And if you click and hold, you'll see the top one looks like a Louis Vuitton handbag or something. That's the spot healing brush. And oddly enough, it only works on photographs of dogs named Spot. It's the weirdest thing. Um, but let's try it on this thing here. Uh, now, with the spot healing brush, you don't have to define a source. It will look around and it will find texture that matches on its own. So if I wanted to get rid of this little blemish here, I'll do a click and you'll see this dark mask appear. Whatever ends up underneath that mask, you have marked for destruction. And when you let go, it will look around and find, boom, texture that matches. Hopefully, it'll do a really good job of it. And for the most part, if you're in a fairly smooth area, it will do a fairly good job. Like if you're removing blemishes on someone's cheek and there's a lot of skin texture around that's pretty good, it can do a pretty good job. Gradients, it has a little trouble with. Or let's say I'm trying to get rid of this little uh, thing on her arm here, the little thread there. So I color across and boom, not too bad of a job. A little bit of softness on the edge here. It didn't know how to do the transition from one side to the other. I could fix that up with a clone stamp. Just hit S on the keyboard, grab the regular old clone stamp and just kind of tighten that edge up a little bit. Things can be fixed. All right. Um, now you might notice with the spot healing brush, we have three different options here. Content aware, create texture and proximity match. With content aware, it can look a pretty good distance around to try to find stuff that it thinks is gonna match. With proximity match, it'll look a little bit closer 
and it may find nothing appropriate. Um, with Create Texture, it'll just try to make a texture that roughly matches the background, and it'll usually do a pretty crappy job. Like it, it usually won't make any texture that resembles anything that's in the rest of the image. So Content Aware and Proximity Match, but like I said, places where it can fall down is in gradients where we know what it's supposed to look like, but the tool doesn't necessarily. Go back into that folder, open up the file called simpletools.tiff. And let's take a look at the spot healing brush on this one. Just follow along on the screen for a second. Again, you don't want too large of a brush. And let's say I wanted to get rid of these little, little dots here. Paint that black mask over top of it. And when you let go, it will look, or, oh, I'm still on create texture. Hang on. Let's try proximity match. Paint over. When you let go, it'll try to find texture that matches to get rid of the blemishes. Now try to be precise with this. I've seen people where they'll take a brush like this and they'll be like, okay, I'm going to do uh, some healing along here. I'll do a brush and 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 there we go. We'll call that retouched. Um, no. Okay. Zoom in, look at the small stuff and run that tool, boink, over top of it. Let it find that stuff to fix it. Now where it can fall down, like let's say I decided, hey, I want to get rid of this line under the eye here. Well, first off, you wouldn't get rid of that completely. If you think about it, the eye is a sphere, and the eyelid is a sphere that kind of makes its way around, and oh, it kind of curves down on the bottom. It makes sense that if it curves away from the light, it would be a little bit darker. If you were to remove this completely, bring it back to the same brightness as all of this, it would look like she's kind of puffy under the eye. You need that curving under, that darkness, to give the shape to the face. But let's say I said, nah, I want to get rid of that. And I've got my spot healing brush, and I'll tell it, mark it for death, get rid of all of that. That sucked. It put, oh, eyebrows onto, yeah, so let's try that again. Take another shot at it. No, no, no. Let's try content aware. Better, but not great. Like I said, it doesn't know, oh, what the heck is that? It doesn't know what this gradient is supposed to look like. You know what an eye looks like. The software doesn't. Same thing with nostrils. If she had like a, a little blemish right in there and you went, let me just get rid of that blemish with, oh dear, that's not good. The clone stamp, you know what a nostril looks like. You could say, well, there's a gradient going this way. There's a curve of the nostril. I could grab something from up above and I could clone that down below, maybe something from below back up to get rid of that blemish in there. You know what it's supposed to look like. The software doesn't. What if I tried proximity match? Nope, not better. So be careful with the spot healing brush. Just make sure there's a lot of similar texture around that it can look for and grab. And if something goes wrong, don't try to fix it. What's the keyboard shortcut to undo? Command Z. I've seen areas where like, you know, there'd be like one tiny little blemish and this giant blobby bleh all around it where they just kept going nuts trying to get this thing fixed. If something doesn't work, erase it. And if you're working on a transparent layer, make sure, first off, it's set to sample layers. And if something does mess up quite tragically, uh, Oh, make sure it's set to sample all layers. And something does mess up quite tragically, either undo it, Command Z, or hit E on the keyboard, grab your eraser, and just erase the problem area. All right? There's one more thing I wanted to show you with the regular healing brush. Let me just revert this back. And let's say I wanted to fix this little blemish here, and I was like, hey, with the uh, regular old healing brush, I don't have to worry about brightness. I could go from this really bright area into this really dark area. And that's true. If I sampled this and I moved over to here, you can see that it's going to be too bright. But as soon as I click, boink, it matches brightness, but it doesn't match contrast. You'll notice that I'm cloning from an area, see that plus sign over there, that's my source. I'm cloning from an area that's in a reflection. So we got really bright highlights and some really dark shadows in here. So when it darkened down those highlights to match the rest of this image, the shadows also got darkened and it looks like, I don't know, stubble or something. So it's really good at matching texture, not so good at matching contrast. So just be careful with all the tools. And if something doesn't work, command Z. Guys, you you can actually clone from one document to another. Like let's say on the, the girl here, they wanted to replace her ear, so they wanted Ray's ear on her. If I hold down the option key and boink, sample on Ray, and then I pop over to her, I can do an ear transplant. Okay? So you can clone between, what? <laughs> what? Um, you can clone between documents as well. Although, 
he had a message saying that it wouldn't work because the bit depth didn't match. So if you're going, say, from a 16-bit document to an 8, well, in that case, you can't clone. But if they're the same bit depth, there we go. And even a nose transplant if you need. Okay, that's, that's yeah, we'll just undo that. <clears throat> Call up the image cloning along the edge. And let's take a look at what's going on here. This is a crop, a close crop of the bottom of an image of a wedding dress. And for some reason, clothing stylists, when they're like, you know, snipping threads and tags and stuff, like to just drop them onto the floor of the set. And this is a little tag protruding from underneath the bottom of the hem of the dress. What do you think would be a good way to deal with this thing, other than a lit match on set? Mm -hmm. Although the lesson here is keep your sets clean, like, like sweep between shots and stuff. Um, what if I took a clone stamp and maybe I sampled, because like, you know, here's the floor and it's all gray, right? I could sample this and I could like, put that over top. Is that a good job? No, it sucks, doesn't it? Look at how much brighter it is in here. Th this is what's called a, a contact shadow. When something makes contact with something else, like if you put your hands together, you see there's a dark line in between. So the light is getting blocked from there a little bit. Like this is the shadow of the dress as it makes its way, but it gets a little bit darker as it gets closer. So probably this direction would be a better way to go. But what if I use the top of the brush as a guide? First off, a bit of a smaller brush, and maybe I could use, hey, anybody know how I'm changing the size of my brush from the keyboard? Am I using telekinetic abilities? the square brackets to the right of the P key. So let's say I took a bit of a smaller brush, and maybe I used the top of the brush as a guide, just let it uh, touch up against the bottom of the hem of the dress there. And it went option, click, to define my source. Then I moved over to here, and the next click will define my destination. Now, is this a good job here? Do, 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 do. There we go. No, it looks like a little piece of the dress has been cut out. What about this? Do, 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 do. No, looks like there's a little bit of extra bit on the dress. Make sure you keep it nice and precise. In fact, I could use the middle of that bullseye if I wanted. If we zoom in there, there's a little line of pixels right at the end of the dress. Maybe I'll option click, boink, on that. And I can tell if I'm gonna go too high or too low because that little preview is gonna show me. And I can clone across. Now, be careful though. Watch what happens if I keep going. See that plus sign on the right? That's my source. The circle is my destination. And watch what happens when the source goes over top of where the tag used to be. I have basically just moved it over. That's not helpful. So make sure you stop before it starts to duplicate again. And if you think it's going to, let's say I had a bit of a smaller gap from here to here and I can't get all the way to the end before it starts duplicating again, let go of the mouse, click again, and now the source will remember those new pixels and I can continue across. Now be careful that you don't get like a really noticeable repeating pattern like this and this are kind of obviously the same thing. So maybe a little bit of a, a farther back starting point, maybe from here over might be a good way to go. But see if you can get rid of that little thread along the bottom there. And ideally you should be able to just turn that top transparent layer off and on, just turn its visibility off and on, and it should look as though that thing just vanished, just disappeared. The trick with retouching is to leave no trace behind. Let nobody figure out what you've done. And if you've done your job right, you'll never get credit in a magazine. Not that I'm bitter about that. <laughs>